So I thought I'd make a bit of a change from my usual videos, which are mostly sort of rehousing. Um, and I thought I'd show you some of the things that you can do as a newbie tarantula keeper, or even if you've been keeping for a while, you might not find this very helpful. You've probably discovered most of this stuff for yourself anyway. Um, but if you're new to the hobby and you're worried about the expense that might be involved in keeping tarantulas, I just wanted to show you some of the things that you can do uh, that's going to really keep everything on a budget. Um, you can pretty much do this for next to nothing. Um, a lot of these things, the, a lot of these things are basically free, um, or it's things that you can pick up really cheap um, from just like budget shops in your area. Um, so. I have a collection of bits and pieces from my collection um, that I will show you and just give a bit of an explanation on. Um, fungus gnats, hate them. Um, <laughs> so I will show you those now. So you want to buy a tarantula. Um, you're going to wonder what you need in order to keep it. Um, is it expensive? Um, do you need heating? Do you need lighting? Do you need all of these things? And the answer to that basically is no, you don't. Um, tarantulas will quite happily live at room temperature so you don't have to worry about supplemental heating unless of course your house is particularly cold or you're going to keep them in a particularly cold room you might want them to look at other ways that you can heat that area um, but that's not something that most people ever need to worry about in terms of uh, providing any sort of artificial lighting it's totally not necessary tarantulas mostly live in the dark um, they will typically shy away from um, sunlight or daylight um, so the only time you really need to think about lighting is if you want to have like a big planted, well not even, if you want to have a planted vivarium, um, then that's the sort of thing you're going to have to sort of think about in terms of lighting. Otherwise, it is absolutely so simple. A couple of things that you really need. Um, there's a couple of things that you really need uh, when you're thinking about a tarantula, um, and that's something to house it in, um, substrate um, and water. So in terms of substrate, um, most people when they start out are never using cocoa fibre. Some people that have been keeping for years still use cocoa fibre. I personally don't like cocoa fibre. Uh, I find that it moulds way too much and way too quickly, um, especially if it's um, a species that you need to sort of, you need a lot of humidity for because you're, you're going to be wanting to keep that substrate moist, mostly. Um, what you can move on to, and people often do, is they'll try things like moss, um, I've just switched over to topsoil and I'm trying that and see how that works because I've had so many problems with mold um, and I just don't want to use cocoa fiber anymore as much as I can help it. Um, cocoa fiber is actually fine if you're just going to use it for slings because you rehouse them fairly regularly so you don't get much chance for anything to build up in that um, or anything that you're going to keep dry. If you keep the cocoa fiber dry it's not really going to mold so it's not really a problem. Benefits to cocoa fiber is it's very light um, downsides to things like topsoil is it bloody heavy um, so some of my glass uh, enclosures now are a pain in the neck to get on and off the shelf but hopefully they won't go mould e. um, so we'll see all trial and error so I'll start off with some basics just some things that you could even find around the house that you could use to house your tarantulas things that your tarantulas might even be delivered to you in that you can keep your tarantulas in for a period of time um, and then we'll go into some other bits and pieces as well. So, to start with, if you're ordering a sling, it will likely come out to you in one of these. Um, commonly, it's just called a sling pot. You'll find that it's packed in there with uh, tissue paper to stop your sling or your little tarantula getting bounced around in the postage. Um, but once you've taken that out, a little bit of substrate, and you've got a perfectly good home for your baby tarantula. Um, until it reaches the point where you actually have to rehouse it. Um, and then when you're thinking about rehousing, there's lots of other things that you can go into. We have, I can't find the lid for this, but this is a pot that Morio worms come in. That with the lid on, the lid already has air holes in it. Um, so that makes a perfectly good um, little enclosure for your growing spider and it's free no cost at all actually if you've got bigger spiders as well you can also use that for a water bowl other things that you can use deli cups 
Um, lots of people use jelly cups. They're good for species that like to burrow because you can obviously put a lot of substrate in there so you, you've got a nice depth of substrate for it to burrow in. Um, this one here, I've just melted some holes in the top for ventilation and I've also got some ventilation on the side there. Excuse me. Moving on to other things. You've got the boxes that your crickets or your mealworms or whatever else comes in. That can also be used. Um, and again, that's free. Um, it's otherwise going to go in the recycling. These come with lots of air holes already in the sides. And if you've got something that's more of a terrestrial species that doesn't necessarily like to burrow, um, but could just do with a bit of a hide, that's perfect. Cost of nothing. Takeaway containers. All it needs is a few air holes. It's not the best. You can't see through it. Um, but in terms of keeping things cheap or on a budget, it's a no-brainer. If you're moving on and you've got things that are a bit bigger, a lot of people use things like this for arboreal species. Um, this is a it's a sweet jar. You can buy them on Amazon. They're not very expensive. I've currently got the remainder of my assassin bugs living in here. Um, but yeah, air holes in the top. You could even put air holes around the side if you've got something like an avicularia that requires more cross ventilation. It's ideal on a budget. Other things that I've got, that I've used. This seemed to have been a bit of a craze a few years ago. Uh, Ferrero Rocher boxes. Um, if you can see there, I've just a rudimentary cut across there, which didn't necessarily go to plan, and some sellotape on there just to form the hinge for the door. I have in here a very little um, carabiner verse colour, um, and you can see all the webbing that it's done. I have cross ventilation on either side there, um, and it was four pounds for the chocolates and I got a free enclosure. More freebies. A couple of years ago I got, uh, for Christmas, somebody bought me a beard care kit with all the oils and stuff in it that I don't use. So <laughs> what that kit came in was this plastic pot here. Now, I've put ventilation in the top, I've put ventilation around the side. Um, I get a good view into this, and they're not out at the moment, but I have a little Balfouri communal of two that live in there quite happily. Again, free, would have gone in the recycling. Food containers. Buy these in Poundland, a pack of three for a couple of quid. Ideal. If you're wanting to spend a bit more money, these are both things that I picked up from, I think they came from like Home Bargains or somewhere like that, and again, a couple of pounds each. So we've got food storage containers that I've put ventilation into. Um, they, well, it's not an amazing lock, but they do seal, so the tarantula can't get out. That provides a perfect home. I have this, which I guess would be for like a cereal or something like that. Um, this is what I've been raising some of my arboreal uh, slings in, uh, well, sort of grown on slings. Um, this one comes with this ventilation hole at the top there. Um, and as you can see, it provides a perfect little home. And again, it was a couple of pounds. There's no need to spend huge amounts of money on flashy exo terrors of all sorts of various sizes. Um, I personally don't see the point in spending that kind of money for things that I'm gonna to use to grow tarantulas on it. I don't mind spending money on uh, the bigger uh, enclosures uh, I've got four or five exoterras for my larger species. Um, 
and a couple of my others live in old fish tanks, which I will replace at some point because I don't like them so much. Um, but you can do all of that with these things. Very cheap or free. Something that's a bit dirty, but I did make this myself. This was a lantern from Walkinson's. It was eight pounds. Now I had some mesh, so I have meshed over the top part there, so the tarantula can't get out. This has a locking mechanism on the door, and I've just spilled the water. Um, so there's a locking mechanism on the door, and she could do with a rehouse at some point soon. But you can see in there, that's a decent sized Samopeus Cambridge, and she's doing very well in there. That was all homemade, um, probably total cost of about £15, if that. So again, it doesn't have to be expensive, and it is looking a bit tatty now, but it was quite a nice looking um, glass enclosure, and for not a lot of money. Even if you've got bigger spiders um, that you perhaps don't have on display so much or you're not too bothered even about how they how their enclosure looks from the outside if you're if the aesthetic of the enclosure isn't too important these really useful boxes or rubs um, people typically call them um, easy enough to melt some ventilation holes in I've got a small colony of dubia roaches in this but you can keep tarantulas in them um, there's not a problem with that at all they have a nice locking lid, so your tarantula can't get out. Um, and again, this this was from home base. Not a lot of money. Had a, a set of maybe five, I think there was, of various sizes. Um, and it's typically what I keep my roach colonies in now. If you want to go onto something that's kind of purpose made. You get these little fornariums. Now the only issue that I have with these fornariums is that they have a lot of ventilation so they're not always great for keeping moisture in. Um, but I have, I don't know if you can see it in there, but I have a little Brachypelma homori living in here. Um, seems very happy with life. Um, and this was £2.99 on Amazon. So again, it's not very expensive. Um, what I like about these is that you can stack them one on top of the other. I think they look a bit smarter on the shelf than some of the sort of household tubs and things like that that you can use. Um, and they're absolutely ideal for growing on your slings or small juvies. Um, obviously they're clear. They do have a bit of a tint. To the plastic, uh, which I don't like, um, but for what they do and for what they cost, I personally think that these are ideal. And at two pounds ninety nine, you can't really complain. Other bits and pieces that you get for free: milk bottle tops, squash tops, fizzy drink tops. These little things, absolutely perfect for water dishes for your smaller spiders. And also, if you're if you're a porky sod like me, and you quite like a dessert, um, I'd recommend like Goo. Uh, or if I shop at Lidl now. Um, Lidl do their own versions, and they come in these little glass ramekin type things, and they're absolutely perfect water dishes for your bigger spiders. Um, I personally am not a fan of attaching my uh, water receptacle. Um, high up in arboreal enclosures because I have seen all of my all of my arboreal tarantulas they will come out and they will um, come out to a water bowl even if it's on the floor so for me personally I don't see the need for attaching them higher up um, and I think it's probably quite a wise, nice idea to sort of encourage your spider to come out a bit more and search for its water and you just have a bit more chance of seeing it because a lot of a lot of our tarantulas um, they do spend most of their time hiding 
it's not why we got them. You know, we got them to see them, and if we can encourage them out, that's going to be a good thing. I now have about 30 tarantulas plus some other bits and bobs. Um, and I'm quite sure I saw this on Dave's Little Beasties um, and I decided it was high time I got myself one. I got this on Amazon, this was £12. Um, not a lot of money really for what it is. It holds five litres of water, so when you're watering a lot of tarantulas, you haven't got to keep changing your, your water sprayer. If you've only got one or two spiders, or even just a small number of spiders, you can use the small handheld pump action things to add a bit of moisture into the enclosure. Um, you could even just use a little watering can for topping up your water dishes. But this is really handy, really, really handy, and I love it. Other things that people spend a lot of money on is decor. Um, you can provide hides for your tarantulas with just cheap little plastic plant pots. Um, I don't have any because I don't like them myself and I like all of my, tar my uh, tarantula enclosures to look more natural. On the note of natural, um, you can check out Dave's Little Beasties earlier videos and he'll talk to you about how he goes and collects his own substrates. Um, he collects his own mosses and I'm very jealous about the moss field that he seems to have found because I can only ever find little bits in my local parks. One of the things I do find in my local park quite often is you've got natural twigs with a lovely lichen on there. So if you're looking for some interesting things to decorate your enclosures with, as long as you can get it from somewhere that's, you know, it's not likely to have come into contact with chemicals. Um, both of my local parks have, they're very sort of like wild and left to go for nature. Um, and I know that they don't, you know, they encourage nature there, so they're not using any pesticides. There's not too near a road, but I do give all of this a good wash when I get back anyway, just in case. Um, and again, that's absolutely free. Um, the only things that you might, or you probably will want to spend some money on is perhaps some cork bark. Um, but aside from your cork bark, your substrate, and the spider itself, you can literally make an enclosure, your water dishes, all of that stuff, and you can get all of that, plus some decor, for absolutely free. So keeping tarantulas does not need to be expensive. It's as expensive as you want to make it. And there's no reason why you should be going out and spending all this money or be being coerced into spending a load of money. Because if it's your first tarantula or if, you've, if you're on a bit of a budget, you don't have to feel obliged to go out and have all of this, these big glass enclosures that cost a fortune. Um, if you do want to move into the glass enclosures, I strongly recommend things like Gumtree, uh, Facebook Marketplace is great. A lot of my big exoterras I got from Facebook Marketplace, uh, from Facebook Marketplace for a fraction of the uh, retail cost of new ones, um, and they do the job just as well. Um, so, with all that said, I hope this wasn't too garbled. Um, it makes a change for me to be in, on camera quite so much because normally my partner's around and there's a lot of background noise, so I tend to just film and put music over the top. Um, but I decided it'll be quite nice for me to have a bit of time in front of the camera and do something where I'm explaining some of the things that I've learned over the few years now that I've been keeping tarantulas. And I hope it has helped you, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Um, I upload as often as I can, but I work a lot, so filming time is a bit um, scarce. Um, if you like the video, please drop a thumbs up. Um, and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.